An orthopedic surgeon is someone who diagnoses and treats conditions of the musculoskeletal system. That involves the joints, the bones, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, and also nerves. The average day in the life of an orthopedic surgeon is varied but extremely interesting. I start off generally in the morning with a trauma meeting where we discuss the patients admitted via uh, the accident and emergency department the night before. After the meeting, then the ward round is carried out where these patients are reviewed and decisions made for their further investigation and treatment. At the same time, there will be patients on the ward who have already had their procedure and they will be reviewed. Thereafter, I may go to a clinic. Clinics can either be trauma clinics where I see primarily patients presenting with fractures where they are uh, diagnosed and subsequently treated or elective clinics where patients come with painful joints. That can either be in younger patients uh, where it can be secondary to sporting activity, muscle injuries or elderly patients with arthritic conditions. Because I specialize in hip and knee replacement surgery, it's usually patients presenting with painful hips and knees. There's also the theater side where patient procedures are carried out and these are varied. Primarily, I treat conditions of the hip and knee, but being a, an orthopedic surgeon, I can also treat other conditions such as hand conditions, a carpal tunnel a decompressions, trigger fingers, uh, and also uh, dealing with conditions of the feet. In addition to the clinical side, there is also teaching, teaching of medical students and uh, allied professionals such as the nursing staff, and also um, partaking in committee meetings where the service provision uh, is decided. The most common orthopedic conditions I see, they're in two parts. I see trauma patients or elective patients. On the trauma side, the most common fractures I see in adults are fractures of uh, the distal radius, i.e. fractures near the wrist, ankle fractures, or fractures uh, of, of the femur, so around the hip. In children, they can be fractures of the wrist or the elbow. Those are the common areas that I see fractures. On the elective side, because I'm a hip and knee specialist, it will be patients with painful conditions of those areas. Now that can either be in young patient a muscle sprain or strain uh, or tear. Uh, on the, in an older patient it's because of end stage arthritis. However, younger and younger patients are presenting with degenerative changes and that can be because of prior conditions such as trauma or an underlying congenital abnormality. A patient may require hip and knee replacement surgery when the articular surface of the joint is damaged. And that damage can, be, can occur due to natural aging of the joint or due to underlying conditions such as trauma, uh, medical conditions which can lead to disease of, of the joint such as uh, sickle cell disease uh, or if there has been some underlying congenital abnormality. My top tips for keeping the musculoskeletal system healthy are one, having a balanced diet. A balanced diet uh, will hopefully lead to you maintaining your weight because excessive weight will lead to excess force across the joint and that can lead to early wear of the cartilage. It will also provide essential nutrients to keep the muscles and bones healthy such as calcium, vitamins, minerals and uh, also antioxidants which can lead to a reduction of damage to the articular cartilage. Exercise is incredibly important because that also strengthens the bone, strengthens the muscles, which can lead to, and both of those will lead to stabilization of a joint and a reduction of wear across the, the joint surface. But it's important that prior to exercise that muscles are adequately warmed so that that can prevent tears and sprains. And also at the end of activity that the muscles are stretched for the same reason. Whilst doing the exercise, it's important that it's done adequately. So when you're in the gym, make sure that you have uh, advice on how to use the equipment correctly because that in turn can lead to trauma. And making sure that you wear adequate footwear and have the right equipment in order to carry out the exercise effectively.